Hey people, my name is Swade and we're playing some Future Start multiplayer today. So let's get started with this. So we are China and we have decent land, oil, river. This is pretty standard. Uh, so one thing is if you're not religious, C5, okay. If you're not, or sorry, if you're not industrious, then you want to switch into anarchy immediately. If you are industrious, even in despotism with your slow worker speed, you have the option of a one turn road or irrigation. So I'm actually going to do a road right now. I'm going to walk my settler here. That way I can chop this forest, road, and go back in this direction to chop more forests. So uh, we're going to go into anarchy now, because that's what you do in future. And in three turns. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, I have the, also have the option of chopping these forests, I guess. That's probably the better idea, actually. Because uh, if I get a bonus grassland here, I can just irrigate it and start using it. But if I get a bonus grassland here, it won't be accessible yet. So yeah, I walked in this direction just so I get uh, less tundra. I could have walked here, I guess. Uh, it's, in the future, it's not super important that your capital is on a river because your capital, um, the palace actually serves as an aqueduct in future. Like it lets you grow to size seven. Otherwise, some people would be able to draft instantly and some wouldn't and it would be super unbalanced. Because <laughs> drafting is the main way you get armies out, at least in the early phases of the future. Uh, so C5, AB6, and... Uh, if you're playing a game of future, one thing you'll also want to do is set your sliders down, but you have to plant your first city before you can adjust the sliders. So we're not going to be doing that just yet, and we can do that now. So if you're new, I'd actually recommend you do like 20% happiness just off the bat, just so you don't fuck up and accidentally get a civil disorder in your capital. Uh, but I'm experienced. I, I know the ins and outs of things, and so I'm going to wait and get the maximum gold possible before I, I do that. Okay, uh, so we're going to chop, we'll say this one. Generally, if you move like along the grid, like east, west, north, south, as opposed to northeast and north, south, that's better. Like this road will give us access to uh, eight tiles, whereas this one only, sorry, eight or six tiles that we didn't already have. And this one only gives us t access to three tiles. So given that I don't have any reason to believe that this tile, like anything to do with this tile, th this road is just strictly better from a strategic perspective in terms of what it gives us access to. So in future, you explore with your king a bit, but you don't pop huts with your king. That's because your king is coded as a military unit, and as soon as you have one military unit, you can pop barbarians. So uh, if we pop barbarians, it's going to be very bad. We might even lose our king in un not very likely. This is region difficulty, and the king has three defense, but it's possible. Uh, so we first thing we do is we build a scout, and we chop the forest to get that scout out sooner. So the build, or sorry, not a scout, an explorer. The build order in future is explorer, granary, and then you got some flexibility. It's a pretty flexible mod. There's just a million different options. <laughs> Uh, is he industrious? Yeah, he does. He is. So we're going to go Republic today. Yes. Uh, so both fascism and Republic are buffed relative to the base game. You do get like, I think 150% bonus. Uh, bonus worker speed uh, when you're in Republic. So you can actually chop one per turn if you're industrious and in, 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 in Republic. Uh, regardless if you're in Republic or, or sorry, if you're industrious or not, you can always road one per turn and irrigate one per turn. And the other thing that's buffed about Republic is that you only pay one gold per unit that you exceed the cap by. So it's not super punishing in that sense, like it is in the base game. Oh, just for generally, and some, for some reason, war wariness doesn't work in multiplayer. There's no war wariness ever in multiplayer, uh, which is usually balanced out by the fact that you're going to want a, unit, a lot of unit support in multiplayer. Oh, hey. 
Uh, so if you just play like a standard game of Civ Three, even without the War Warrior, this Republic's gonna be pretty weak since you're gonna need a lot of troops because humans are super aggressive. Nice, we got our pop. So one thing I did before I popped that hut was I checked to make sure that nobody else has, everybody has planted their city. So if they have score, that's because they have a city. Uh, so yeah, because you can't pop if you have an, a below average number of cities. And if one person hasn't planted, then the average is like 0.87, so nobody else can pop. Uh, I think we do want to be coastal, though. Yeah, this looks like Archipelago, so we're going to want to be coastal just so we have some flexibility as to how we play this. You're pretty much just like locked in if you don't have a coastal city in future, especially in Archipelago. So it's very important you get a, a coastal city out as soon as possible. Okay, uh, so I'm going to go for one irrigated tile and then I'm going to uh, chop towards our granary. The one downside to being coastal is you it makes you a bit more vulnerable. Uh, but we got the early pop, so we should be in a good position here. Uh, we had three turn anarchy, we're industrious. We got a lot of things going for us here that make me think that we'll do just fine. Uh, sorry, that make me think that we're ahead of the curve. Because, right... The, you have to like compare yourself about against like where are your enemies going to be at in terms of their growth because once they get to size seven they can draft and they can put that on a boat and they put it on a boat and they go take your pop city, so it takes a bit of travel time in the boat, uh, like three turns maybe. So as long as you're not three turns behind them, you should be fine. Oh, I guess I do have to walk my Tao from Beijing to Shanghai. But this is a pretty big map. Nobody has information on me. Like, nobody can see my borders or anything. If I see an enemy Civ, then my opinion on this will change. Uh, but I think I can play a bit risky. So in terms of tile assignments, uh, the value of one shield is four gold because you're in Republic, so that's what you pay for shields. Uh, when you hurry production. And you have no other use for gold than to hurry production. Because this is future start. You start with all the techs. Effectively all the techs. So yeah, I'd rather use this tile than even this tile if it didn't have the irrigation. Uh, I could actually do this. Could I... Do I have the gold for this? No. There's some clever ways you can do rushing to save uh, to save gold. So yeah, notice I'm not popping that hut with my king, because it could give me barbarians. I want the best results possible. Uh, I'm not going to get another city, because I have an above average number of cities now. Oh, I can just do one here, and that would give me access to all both these resources and the uranium. So I'll tell my allies, big three plus Yura. So the big three are the components of um, modern armor, so oil, aluminum, and rubber. Uh, so is there something that costs 20? Uh, I don't know. Uh, if I actually stuck using the the bonus grassland tile, I'd have six food in the box now. And then I can just irrigate this and I'd six plus four, I would have four surplus food. That's too bad. Let's do this. Oh, nice. That's fine. Yeah, it's a good idea to rush the, the granary just so you get tempo. So our, our, our island is decently small. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... 
go pop this hut, and then I'm actually going to rush out a galleon real quick. Yeah, we'll do this. Just for some extra cash infusion right there. We're kind of low on shields. Like, the irrigated tiles we have aren't bonus grasslands, which isn't ideal. But, I mean, we're alone. We're, we've are we got a good pop. We have resources. It's not bothering me too much. And we got the granary out quick, which is important. So, ideally, you want to complete the granary the turn before you grow. Because if you grow and you complete the granary at the same time, you're not going to get the, the bonus food in here. Uh, but you'll see we will get the this food will carry over when we grow. If you build a granary, wait a turn, and then you grow. Okay. Uh, so a question right now is, ah, damn, am I safe going for a settler before I get to size seven and draft? And uh, I think I will be as long as I get a galleon out in the city. Because if I get a galleon out in the city, I can look around and see what's there. And if there's somebody there, then I could at least plan around that and start like desperately trying to get a unit into Shanghai to protect it. Or maybe they'll be scared of me. <laughs> uh, but if I don't do that, I'm playing in the dark. Uh, yeah. So, one shield is worth... Uh, a little less than four gold. I'd rather have the four gold than the one shield. Because like I have the option between using this or I have or a forest. But the, the gold can go anywhere, whereas the shield has to be used in the city immediately. Oh crap. You always adjust the happiness slider, make sure your city doesn't disorder. And here we're going for Galleon. C5, AB6, and... I think he said he was in this direction. I don't quite remember. Wow, I got a lot of resources. Okay, so I've mostly mapped out my own continent. Is he even in? The... Did he drop or something? Okay, so we have effectively five shields per turn. Okay, D2. So we have effectively five shields per turn because, oh, we only have three surplus food. So we're, we'll see where this new uh, citizen gets assigned to. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh interesting. Okay. So now we have five surplus food. Uh, so the new citizen will definitely be assigned to the forest tile. But we are actually short one shield because we're going to have five shields and we're short, we need six shields. So what do we do? We switch to explorer. We rush the Explorer, and that gives us one more shield in the box right there, and we switch back to Settler. If we rush settlers, to the if we rushed the Settler out, right, two things would have happened. One, we don't have enough gold, but two, it would have cost us more gold. It would have cost us an extra 
So it's four gold per shield. So that would cost us an extra 20 gold right there if we just rush the settler. And obviously that's wasteful. So little tricks like this can save you money and help accelerate your early game in future. So yeah, this is on a river uh, and it gives us access to three, I mean, really just two, but <laughs> I mean, the tiles themselves with the U resources on them are pretty good. And uh, there's enough grassland that if I wanted to, I could turn this into a drafting city that can grow one citizen per turn. Keep scouting with my king because it's safe to do so. Uh, yeah, it looks like the only land is down here, so I think I am safe to get out another worker. And we want to focus on improving these tiles, because these tiles can be flexed between this city and this city. If we improve, let's say, these tiles, then only Beijing at the moment can use those tiles. I actually don't have enough gold or enough shields for a worker, so I guess we're doing the safe play. Uh, Coliseum, I guess. This is the kind of start where we actually do want a lot of workers, though. Because we're pretty safe. Like, just 2,000 in Shanghai uh, should make us fine. Uh, but switching to the worker now is so wasteful. <laughs> and we'll see what we need. Okay. Oh, we'll get the worker in Shanghai. Yeah, that should be fine then. Uh, so getting out the explorer early means we can pop huts on islands. So some little gold... If we were behind the curve in terms of expansion, then it would be possible for us to pop huts on islands. Uh, but like I mentioned, you need a, an above average number of cities for, or a below average number of cities or average to be able to pop uh, a settler. Okay, so uh, if your city's building uh, a wonder or a small wonder or wealth, then you cannot receive shields from a chop. So what we can do is we can switch to the wonder and then we can chop here and the shields will go to Canton. And Canton's on a river, so that's the city we want a granary in. So honestly, we got a lot to explore here, so we can even go back here and pick something up. I don't know what it'll be. Maybe an explorer. Could be a settler if we find like a city with iron plus coal. Uh, okay, what costs 30 shields? Yeah, the city's just so low production. Five is a nice round even number. Uh, but we barely have five. Like the new citizen will grow onto the uh, the forest. Yeah, look at that. Ah, oh my God. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll find a hut. So if you see no huts, then it's suspicious because it might mean that... Oh, does this connect? If this doesn't connect... Okay, this doesn't connect, so I should pick up my explorer and keep find a new island. I thought he was on a bigger island than that.
I mean, I'm not seafaring. My ability to make naval plays is kind of meh. Yeah, I still want the Colosseum, though. I want to kind of grow pretty big here. Oh, fuck. So yeah, like I mentioned, you ideally want the granary right before you grow. So that's why I was like, oh, can I rush it now? But I can't. So we have barbs, which is actually good here. Because it looks like there's nobody coming from this angle. And we can go track down the, the camp and kill it for money. Uh, we're not planted on bonus grassland, so when this grows, we're not going to get the extra shield in the city center. Uh, which sucks, because that would give us exactly 10 shields, which is a, a nice even number for, for the rushing tactics. Well, we can get oil if we want oil. <laughs> uh... Yeah, it's no, we'll go here. I guess we'll just finish this manually. That really sucks. Uh, if that's the case, we will need the shields, right? Oh, no. Nice. <laughs> so different commerce yields... Uh, affect the luxury slider and so it affects how much happiness we have okay we want everybody to have as much food as possible so that means shuffling around like this oh this is good this is done pretty quick uh, now we'll start selling in maybe a nuclear sub You always want to be, even if you're like taking a building strategy, you always want to be asserting yourself on the map as much as possible. Shutting down the plays that your enemies might be making. And getting information about what they're doing. Okay, yeah, this is pretty even. So this will be done in two when you take into account the extra shield. Uh, so seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one, two, three, four. Yeah, that's fine. Remember, there's no overflow in Civ. Like if you wait, if you need ten shields to complete something and you have fifteen coming in, you waste five shields. So ideally, you want to minimize that. Okay, I think just this should be. Uh, I mean, we might as well. We're getting the Colosseum, right? We might as well draft a lot. Uh, oh, that's expensive. <laughs> Whatever, though. Okay, we even have the choice if we want to destroy her now. Uh, we could go wartime mode and get out the destroyer and focus on cities, but... Why am I saying but? That's a great idea. <laughs> oh, it kind of goes around. Um, yeah, if we're doing destroyer, we can just like take, be very, take our time with the island hopping. Okay, so this is good timing. We got Granary and Coliseum at the same turn. This is a great time to go into wartime mode. So that'll give us a, a production bonus towards everything we're building. Uh, everything that we can build. Obviously, we can't build peacetime buildings anymore. Uh, but everything else. 
Because like you'll notice we don't get bonus shields towards the seller. We do get bonus shields towards Tau Infantry. And then we can switch from Tau Infantry uh, to, to Settler or whatever else we need. Uh, let's get, let's get this mined mountain. So notice how all the cities are building units that will give them the production bonus for wartime. Even if we're going to switch off of whatever they're building. Okay, Canton actually now has one per turn growth, which is fantastic. We're going to get it, let it grow one more, and then we're going to go for a settler. That's actually better. And yeah, we might as well go all out. Yeah, we've drafted plenty. I think 30% is a good final luxury number. And we're actually wasting some shields here, but that's there is no faster way to do it because we don't have 15 without wartime mode. Yeah, and we can just buy the submarine whenever we want. I think we're going to wait. Uh, haven't encountered the enemies or our allies yet. This is a very lonely game so far. <laughs> but it'll, it'll heat up quick enough. Uh, we will eventually want a city on this coast, so let's aim for here. Yeah, I think we should aim to expand in, like, this area. This is a good first step. Oh, fucking... Okay, we can build planes even right now. We just don't have anything to do with the planes. <laughs> It's good to map out like the northern coast because that's where most of the resources are going to be. Yeah, so we'll chop here and then... Oh, interesting. Oh, that's where the camp is. Okay. <laughs> I forgot about that camp. So we'll plant forest because forest gives us more shields on that tile. Plus two, actually. Uh, yeah, we don't have anything to do with these. And we don't have an out of war. So to get an out of war, you need to either make peace with someone, which your enemies will never do, obviously, or you need to kill someone who you're at war with. I don't think you can kill someone who you're not at war with. <laughs> well, they need to die to whoever. Uh, anyway... So the way you do that is normally you get your allies to like declare war on you and then you, they make peace with you. Uh, we haven't contacted our allies yet though, so that's not an option. Okay. Uh, so we chop. Uh, destroyers are faster, so I think... Yeah, we'll go for the destroyer. Uh, submarines are easy to hide, but turn 23, this is a really early powerful, like to have a boat this powerful this early, no one's going to contest this destroyer.
Halu is C3. Ooh, okay. That's a good piece of information. We're going to keep pumping out settlers from Canton. We're going to need... Oh. Oh, it's Kitty. Okay. Kitty's a noob. I'm not too scared of her. Uh, in fact, we can even kill this with our destroyer. It's good she's scouting, though. That means she's probably around here. Okay, it looks like we want a harbor here. Because uh, this is one of our few naval cities because we spawned so far inland. And can we switch to Settler? We'll see how this works out for us. Uh, we can't actually get it. Okay, we'll give ourselves access to that tile then. I guess we're going for planes in Beijing. Huh. We're playing against the big boys, so uh, we're going to need to, like, uh, who's on the other team? Yeah, Halu and Avalanche are very scary players, so we need to, we can't just, like, killing Kitty won't be enough. We need to get big ourselves while we do kill her, uh, if we, if possible. And we, we found our Galleon. Nice promotion. Uh... Oh, crap. I'm an idiot. We would have been using the... Okay, we got the settler. That's the important part. Let's get some bombers. Uh... Okay, I hate this position because... Uh, we need... <laughs> we need a, a transport, right? But transports are so... Uh, Expensive. I'd much rather have the option to build a galleon, but because we have the oil hooked, it's not an option. <laughs> One turn. Oops. This is actually fine. More commerce this way. Oh, we'll, we'll give... Give Beijing back its rightful oil tile. <laughs> uh, so this is good because it's... We'll do one more round of settlers and start getting workers because this will be done and then we'll have the extra shields. I think they'll give us one worker per turn if we don't already have it. Okay, here's how loot. As prophesized. <laughs> At CD1. Uh, okay. We can't access that just yet. Uh, looks like... Because of the improved commerce, we can now draft again without it costing us. So we'll send another guy here in case there's barbarians. Ooh, we got mechs. Oh, I love mechs. They don't give defensive bombard, but the mobility is ugh, just awesome. Oh, of course, because we hooked the... I'm not going to risk my explorer if he already, already has that explored. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's enemy. Yeah. Good we attacked him because he could feasibly win that 
if he attacked us, not very likely otherwise. And I don't want him to get a golden age, so. Okay, no answer, so I guess we're gonna try to map Halu. Oh, fuck. Okay. Oh, and also... Ah! <laughs> okay, yeah. Halu's... I wouldn't call him big and scary, but two cows, two fucking cows. Okay, this is what we're up against. Uh, so we're going to want a lot of planes. Can we just get the transport or transport out now? Yeah, let's do that. Let's cause Hallow some issues. Oh, here's Ironclad. Okay, we have the Out of War whenever we want it. Okay, I'll go this way, because it seems Avalanche and Kitty are this direction. And we should be able to do one per turn workers. So we're going to start on that. Oh, actually. Ah, crap. <laughs> yeah, good enough. So against Barbarians, as a militaristic civ, we have a 50% chance of upgrading. Ah, we forgot to send this down. Okay, this gives us time to road at least. Oh, he's railing already, ironclad. Shit. Jesus, everybody got <laughs> really good land. This is going to be an intense game. Okay, we'll do one here. That's another lake city. We'll take this. Yeah, we'll, we'll look if there's someone up here. If there is, that is very valuable information. Oh, Kitty is here. What the fuck? Where did she come from? Uh, okay, Abby Manu. That's an important thing. We'll just do that so we get contact with him. Oh, fuck. Please tell me this goes off before end of turn. Ah, oh, fuck. Because now I can't attack him because I've already bombarded. Yeah, at least I got the pillage off. <laughs> So on our in our bomber transport we want two of these. Oh, there's Baghdad's actually rather close. I just have to be careful to like my transport doesn't get sunk. So I'll have to be pretty careful with how I move it. I think three bombers should cause them a lot of pain. If I like get an airbase on this island, for example, that'd be a great spot.
But yeah, we still haven't found El Quixote. Okay, uh, ship in Damascus. He's just NC. Ah, oh, fuck. Ah, oh, where'd he go? Ah, uh, he's seafaring, so he could have gone a lot of different directions. I think he might have... I mean, if he was just going to go home and to unload his units, why wouldn't he just do it immediately? What I was thinking was maybe he had some, like, valuable attack on Ironclad. That he really needed, felt that he needed to execute. I should tell him that, I guess. Air dropped? Oh. <laughs> Oh, it might have been coming home, I guess. So Ix is Abimanyu. So his old name was Ikshawaka. Okay, I might as well... Be on the lookout for Halu's boats. I doubt he'd have any oil boats on this side. Like, why would he do that? It would be a strange play, but it, it's possible, I guess. Uh, it's Kitty. What? How did Kitty get in? The Where is Kitty? Okay, let's have a look. It's in a book. Ah, oh, this is Hastings. If it was readings, I'd... Base 2. I don't have. Oh, I do. Huh. Oh, it's for his unique unit. Yeah, that's why he was asking for flak. So someone could like kill his unique unit and he gets a golden age. Okay, we're going to get a helicopter in there. Uh, I guess we're going to want to, yeah. We can't be too, we, we need to be guarding our king, for example. Oh, so Kitty can actually see us here, uh, but she can't, she can only see two tiles, not three. Oh, we just lost our explorer to the barbs. I <laughs> uh, uh, need... Okay, I, I suppose we should hook spare resources now. Okay, well, no reason to hang out here. I might as well go to the island. Uh, 
Uh, I'm one tile short, but he has no reason to have any units up there. I'm not seeing elk. Okay, there's elk. And yeah, they must have all been together. I can put all my bombers in a stack so I can just stack move them when it's time. It's nice to have one sh uh, city with a barracks in it. We'll do that here. And I don't like not having naval priority, so I'll get this out. It's because someone could boat me. Yeah, if I got one here, that's the most plausible route of attack, route of attack I think. So we switch to Tau, because bombers don't give you the production bonus, Tau does. And we're going to go here. This is Envision. Yeah, you know what? We'll play by the book, I guess. Uh, so if he has Vision, he he knows what's in the air base. That's very valuable for him. So we can just pop the hut with this. Yeah, nice. 25 gold. That's not insignificant. Oh, he can see us from here anyway. One, two, yeah, we might as well go here. That's further out of reach, I think. We'll go home the, the safe way, the long way around. Can we do bomber? Ah, we can do jet fighter. Want res and gold? I know Avalanche, he's not going to stop. Okay. And we'll transition to peacetime buildings. Okay, I might as well use this. Sink some stuff. Well, that answers that question uh, of where his galleon went. <laughs> do this and it's getting some more chops out for Shanghai uh, Kitty has a scout here It's a little greedy when someone's like fucking dying to be asking for <laughs> Golden Age stuff. Pay him. Yeah. If you pay for it, I think <laughs> that's reasonable. He d he did. 
for a while, but you're in trouble. It's okay, yeah. I think they both have legitimate arguments here. Oh, hey, nice, free galleon pickoff. Okay, uh, so end of turn. He'll see the air base, assuming he has vision of this. T uh, he's ever seen this tile. So we do X move, and we can move all our planes at once from the city. Oh, fuck. Do I... Ah, fucking hell. Okay. No, okay, I got the mill over. Okay, so first thing I do is uh, I'm going to do some recon. If there's a vulnerable city to airdrops. Oh, I can just bomb his city out of... Because the first targeted unit in cities, not in airbases, but in cities. Ah, oh, fuck. Jesus. Oh, that's awful luck. And now my oil's gone, so I can't... I didn't realize he was defending a bombing rush. Who is on him? <laughs> is it ironclad? Lemons is avalanche. Yeah, I'll keep him busy for him. please. <laughs> okay. Uh, I need an airbase so I can airlift units in to reinforce this because otherwise he's going to fuck up. Okay, I need to cut his oil first. That should be first priority. I can even... Okay, so we'll do this. Try to bait out his fighters, because... Please tell me my... Uh... Okay, nice. Bombing run failed. Nice, okay. We cut his oil. One turn, but... Clearly, I need to reinforce this. I don't think the city's getting boated anytime soon, so it should be safe. Okay, let's look. What's in Baghdad? Uh, I guess we'll do it next turn. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, I guess we're getting special forces. So special forces is a custom unit in future. Uh, basically, they're like super high-tech marines with two moves. Uh, they can air, not airdrop. Not the, they, you can put them in planes, though, because they're foot units.
Damn, I should have prioritized hooking the extra resources. That was a, a misplay on my part. Oh my fucking god. Okay, well, we'll have a look. Did I just look and then not look? Oh, it's Abby. Oh, I can fucking bomb Baghdad and... Uh, he can take it if I kill everything in it. Damn. Still, he's in trouble. He's got no... He can rush a flak. That's the best thing he could do. Sorry, I need my rubber back. Or not really. It's more of a I need uh, out of war. I still I'm still giving my oil to Germany, so I think he's got aluminum. Yeah, that's aluminum. And we can do factory now. That's nice. So you can bomb planes out of cities, but you actually can't bomb planes out of air bases. Oh, he's railing. Interesting. Okay, I should put my uh, boats on top of each other for defensive bombard. And so I think you get double the, the anti-air in that case. Okay, we'll try this again. Nice, that's a good start. Oh, his oil is just straight up cut by Abby Manu. Good, good play. Nice. One more hit and we take the oil city. Ah, oh, he's reinforcing with the helicopter. Damn, that sucks. Ah, he's getting bombed out a bit. Oh, by Ironclad, of course. <laughs> oh, fuck. I... You know, at least I got the factory coming out. That's That's the important thing. <laughs> And oil is not too far away. Uh, let's go Grant. <sighs> That's a waste. Okay, well, this airbase should be safe now. There's no way he's getting that, any, at least not anytime soon. Uh, that's a waste. We could do Coliseum and then buy an aqueduct. That's a good idea. That, that would give us the furs too without having to plant another city. So let's see. What's he like... What's he got over here? His fighters are over here, so I have to be careful. Yeah, I'm not getting through that. Yeah, it looks like he bombed out the... Nice. Yeah, air units are the first thing that gets focused. Uh, maybe naval units first, but...
Nice, yeah. We killed his helicopter for fucking free. Helicopters are expensive too, so that's a good pickup. I don't really need a... Uh, looks like he shifted his capital because the palace gives acts as an aqueduct. So because the palace is so cheap, people can use that to, yeah. Uh, I should ask for rails at some point. Did I get the... Oh, no, I didn't get the fucking aqueduct. Okay, well, I wanted to buy the aqueduct. Because the city's got a lot of happiness. I might as well. Okay, I'll keep him here. Continuously putting pressure. So if you click right, right before the turn ends, you'll, it'll activate your unit at the start of next turn. Oh, here. And you can't put hel uh, flax in the helicopter, so we can't have any helicopters there, or flax there, unless he rushes it out. Yeah, I've got a ton of bang for my buck in terms of these destroyers. Uh, I could do nuclear plant, I guess. Okay, colony for the oil. And, yeah, fuck it. We'll do a northern city. And grab a quick worker. I'm going to ask for rails. So we need a lot of workers to make the most of that. We'll send this over to where Hollow is. Sure. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll build a modern armor while we have the chance. So we could actually do a naval academy. Ah, it's expensive. <laughs> Yeah, citizens are a valuable resource. Good to get that done. Ah, damn. <laughs> yeah, I'm just enjoying... Nobody's really contesting me with these ships, so... Oh, nice. Oh, and I got horses back, so I can build riders. Nice. Uh, I can rush something cheaper and switch. 
Yeah, stealth fighter. Because the faster I switch, the faster I go into wartime mode. Which is obviously a, a huge boost. It looks like he's railing, or were those was that just were those just colonies? And he sacked workers for it. <laughs> ah, fuck. Because colonies will produce railroads. Where did that come? Did he airlift you? <laughs> did she <laughs> airdrop units in? <laughs> Okay, so that means he's got a flak in there. If it said something about interception. Nice. If it said, like, we've been intercepted, that means he's using uh, fighters or something with the intercept con command. But because it said we were shot down, that's how you know uh, he's got a flak. And you can win against interceptors, especially if you're like bombing with a jet fighter, but you can't win against flax. Either nothing happens. Oh, nice. Good job. Yeah, it looks like my distraction with Baghdad. Like, he, he imported troops over to deal with it. Uh, oh, I thought we did this, but okay. Nice. <laughs> being hand I'm being useful. I'm being useful for my team. Oh, nice. Okay, they conceded. So Future is a bit of an abstract game in that yeah, okay. Often it doesn't result in direct kills, but people will decide, like, we can't compete with what you're producing. So we'll look at the saves and we'll we'll see what the situation they were in. So yeah, people have been saying that bombers are overpowered. They are, but they're not super, super overpowered. What's overpowered is letting your opponent get it, the productive capacity to build a lot of bombers. Which in a game like this, like action started like turn 20, turn 25. Things got really intense. So you don't have to t time to build up that doom stack of bombers. So this is us. Nuclear plant next turn. Like We're going to look at them. They're not going to have the same productive capacity as us. Got a bunch of cities. Uh, we're actually second in score to to Ironclad, another of our teammates. But yeah, yeah, look at this, Jesus! Lots of bombers, railroads. Uh, he's causing issues to Hastings, but Hastings seems to be okay. He doesn't have aluminum. Maybe I should have uh, hooked up aluminum for him. That was a mistake. Uh, oh yeah, he just went for his golden age. He didn't even go for factory or anything like that. And anything else going on in the map? Oh yeah, this was his air base, but he realized Halo had anti-air, so we switched gear. Okay, yeah, this is Germany. This is Abimanyu. Yeah, he's mostly empty at home. Because often when people are bombing you, they don't take the time to bring in ground units like they just have a single carrier or something like that uh, or they don't have a helicopter or they don't have a ship so Abby Manu knows anything else he can retake like we use in cruise missiles if somebody takes Konigsberg he can just use he can cruise the city and retake it uh, but if he loses his capital he's fucked so he's stacking stuff in his capital 
again, not many buildings because action starts immediately in future. <laughs> and yeah, he used the cruise missiles to take uh, Damascus. Oh, he didn't even get a golden age. He must have taken an empty city. And this is Kitty. Okay, so Kitty went for a military academy. She's building up pretty decently. Like, it's not a bad idea. She has too many defensive units because realistically people are just going to ignore her since she is a newer player and go for her teammates. Uh, but it is good she's getting an army out because like an army of Taos, you got two moves, you can heal in other people's lands, you got auto pillage. It's just a good thing to have uh, and good way to make an impact. The issue is how do you get that to somewhere where it's relevant on the map? Like she could maybe, I guess, use a helicopter to airdrop it if she had a helicopter. Uh, she could try to boat it over and protect Baghdad, but can't really protect against bombers using Tau infantry. Yeah, lots of good drafting cities. Uh, she just needed resources, and she's kind of in a pinch because there's no resources anywhere near her. Yeah, and her allies claimed most of the other resource spots. I think this is a little weird because a lot of the resources ended up on my continent. And so everybody else was kind of starved. But yeah, she also could have done wonders uh, or just gone for a ton of gold. Oh, she went fascism. Interesting. Okay. So normally, like in Republic, you can do gold stacking where you just go um, marketplace, bank, stock exchange, Wall Street, and you just stack a ton of gold. And give it to your teammates who have resources, but that's not the case here. Yeah, uh, El Quixote, he has resources, but he's pretty small. He can't really do much with them. And, oh wow, he actually had an ironworks city. That's incredible. And anything in, anywhere interesting on the map? Oh, yeah, they never really, like, Kitty did the scouting. I don't know who did that. Oh, yeah, and Halu's got... He's disordering, he's overdraft... Not quite overdrafted, but he's at... Oh, only 30% happiness. Okay, he didn't overdraft, but he's in trouble, basically. He's going to be hard to hold Baghdad. He has no... The oil's not even hooked. And he's got some good buildings, but if anything, he built too many buildings. He should have focused on getting more uh, planes out early on, I think. I'm curious who sent that boat north of me. Any? No. And yeah. <laughs> oh, he actually did go for ironworks. Good for him. Great city, but it's not such a great city when you get bombed out. Because notice... You lose one commerce, you lose one production, you lose one food because of the crater. So craters are very, very punishing. Yeah. He's got some fighters out. Lots of fighters, actually. Uh, but yeah, whatever he had on the map is, is gone now. I think he had like a carrier or something on Abimanyu. Or that might have been Halu. Uh, anyway, this airbase got taken. So yeah, their team wasn't in position to punish anyone else, and we were. So that's why they conceded. Anyway, that's the end of the game today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.